family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children.
Good morning, House of Prayer. A very warm welcome to you from the worship team and pastor. Uh, we really appreciate your presence in this place and we are glad that you made it this morning because we are now believe that God has great and mighty things for us today because God has given us victory. The year has been tough, but God has been on our side. The same victory that he reigned 2,000 years ago when he went to the cross and he made it victorious, that same victory still stands and it has the power and authority. And there is no situation bigger than the victory that was ever won and there will never be any victory that can surpass what God did on the cross. So this morning, be encouraged, be encouraged, cheer up and just know that God is on your side and you are victorious. Amen. You are created, you were created in the image and in the likeness of God and the God that we save is a champion, he's, a, he's victorious, meaning that you are his, as his sons and daughters, you are champions and you are victorious in everything. It doesn't matter what it looks like, how it looks like, just know that victory is on your side because he rose again 2,000 plus years ago. Amen. Shall we, shall we rise to our feet even as we begin to worship him? Open up your heart, open up yourselves, and just receive from the Lord this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We magnify you because you are good. There is no God who can be compared to you. You alone are the Alpha and you are Omega. You have brought us this far because of your faithfulness. We are here today because you imaged victorious 2,000 plus years ago. And this morning we stand in confidence knowing that whatever we face, we will still be, we are victorious. We will come out strong and better because you, God, you are with us. And if you be for us, who can be against us? Father, we thank you, we bless you because in this place, in our lives and in every situation, there is victory. We can hear that sound of victory, that sound of reigning because you are on our side. We thank you that we are reigning over every impossibility in Christ. Christ Jesus. We are reigning every over obstacle in the name of Jesus. Over every sickness we are reigning. Over every circumstance we are reigning because you God you are on enthroned above everything else. There is no God that can be likened unto you. There will never be a God like you. You alone are God who is who reigns and who is on high. We thank you for reigning in this place. You are reigning oh God above everything else God you are reigning every situation bow every knee must bow at the mention of the name of Jesus the name that is above every other name this name that reigns the name that we save the name that is exalted the name that is mighty we worship you God we worship you we enthrone you you are our God you are our King and we image with you in Jesus' mighty name Father we thank you we thank you for giving us the victory. We thank you for giving us the victory in this country. We thank you for giving us victory in this nation. We thank you for giving us victory over our lives. We thank you for giving us victory over the children. We thank you for giving us victory over the marriages. We thank you for giving us victory over every situation. We are saying you are God and you have emerged victorious in Jesus' mighty name. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify you. You are worthy to receive honor and praise. We've come to celebrate the name that is above every other name. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name. As everyone in the house victoriously says, Amen. Amen.
to me. 
In the noontime, in the daytime, I will bless the Lord. When I'm tired, when I am weak, when I am thirsty, I will bless the Lord. When I don't know what to do, when people are against me, I will do what? I will bless the Lord. When people surround me, that wants to destroy me, I will stop. this Sunday morning the first Sunday of the October 2020 as a house of prayer saints of God Lord we wanted to declare one thing you will all are worthy to be worshipped you will all are the living God 
Thank you, Lord, for the privilege you've given us to come before you, to kneel before you, to pour our hearts, who is the only living, loving, faithful, caring God. Lord, we want to say thank you. Church, let's take you one minute to open our heart and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Oh, today we are alive because of his mercy. We are alive because of his grace. We are alive because of his unfailing love, beloved child of God. Oh, we have a reason to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. Thank you, Lord, for preserving our lives. Thank you, Lord, for providing us. Thank you for sustaining us your eternal salvation. Thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus. The power in the name of Jesus. We want to say thank you. Many mighty have perished. Many people who thought we will make it to 2020, we, they are no more. But here we are because of your plan and purpose. We want to say thank you, Jesus. Oh, we totally surrender our lives before you, oh God. If there is anything in us still, oh God, which is not pleasing unto you, cleanse us with your precious blood, oh Jesus. Let nothing hinder us to approach you, oh God. Father, this morning, as a house of the congregation, we surrender to you. Thank you, Lord, for all of us as a family. Father, we pray for every single individual of house of the congregation. Our fathers, our mothers, our brothers, our sisters, our couples, our singles, our widow, widowers, our children, our young people, our teenagers, oh God, our youth. Lord, we commit everyone in the sanctuary. Lord, you are with them, oh God. Lord, the spiritual, emotional, relational, financial needs, we surrender to you today. You are open the heaven and blessing us. Some of us are not with us wherever they are. We pray your gracious hand will reach to them, oh Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for that, oh Lord. We commit our nation, Zambia. We from the president to every citizen of this nation. Lord, bless the nation of Zambia, oh God. Lord, especially once again, we stand against the COVID-19, oh God. COVID-19, a sickness with the name. Your word says at the mention of the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess, including the name and the work of the COVID will bow even not only in Zambia around the world in the name of Jesus thank you Holy Spirit we pray for various nationalities that are residing this nation bless your God we pray for various nationalities that are represented in our so prayer we speak your blessings upon everyone of God we also pray oh God world at large the body of Jesus Christ at large oh where there is no freedom to worship even truth and spread such places we surrender to you oh Jesus Today, we commit the rest of the service into your hand. Thank you, Lord, for the grace you've given us to remember and partake the Holy Communion, the meal of the new covenant, your body and your blood. Prepare us, O God. Prepare us, O God. Prepare us. We totally commit everything in your hands. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Please take your seat. Praise the Lord and good morning, church. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. And that is His. Amen. Can we give a big round of applause to appreciate our God for this Sunday morning? Hallelujah. You all look glorious, awesome, filled with the mighty presence of God. Amen. I think we can give a one more better clap offering to just appreciate our God. Hallelujah. Amen. As we appreciate our God, can you turn to a neighbor who is sitting one meter away from you and uh, if you are, it's not one meter, you are free not to greet. Just wave at the brother and sister. My good brother, sister, good to see you in the house of God. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. 
beloved church the lord has enabled us to see the last quarter of 2020 it's only through his grace only through his grace amen may the lord continue to bless all of us let me take once again this beautiful opportunity to welcome you all to the first sunday of 2020 october the Lord is with us. God has a great plan for us. This last quarter of 2020, we asked the song, the worship team, we were singing, we are going to be victorious. We are going to reign. Hallelujah. The declare the goodness of God. Amen. Let me take once again this wonderful, awesome opportunity to welcome you all to this beautiful Sunday morning service. May the Lord bless you. You are in a right place. God has a greater plan and the blessing for us this morning. Amen. As we welcome everyone, let's acknowledge anyone here for the first time. Is it your first time to attend a Sunday service in house of prayer? Would you please stand? Anyone here? Yes. We have a brother. Please welcome brother. Please remain standing. Amen and amen. If you received a welcome card, you kindly sit. Amen. We highly appreciate our visitors. You make a great difference. We always say, if you are just visiting us this morning, we take our warm and wonderful Christian greetings to your own family, your church. Looking forward to fellowship with you. May the Lord bless you. Maybe you are a resident in Indola. You have relocated to Indola past a few months and years. You have been searching for a family church to fellowship. As a part of the search this Sunday morning, you are here. As a house of prayer family, we have a good news. The good news is your search has come to an end. We are Bible-believing Pentecostal church. As you worship with us, we will let you know the vision and the mission the Lord has given to us so we will be able to serve the Lord. As you receive the welcome card, this uh, perforation part, please fill your detail, my brother. After filling, tear it. The portion you fill, please kindly hand over to the ushers. We will be in touch with you. We are so honored to have you here in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church, for your prayer support on last Sunday. The Godfrey Shindano, Leonard, and I to went to Kabombo to stand with Brother Ross and Sister Helen and the family for the burial. The Lord gave them victory. They all are back. Sister Helen just came late last night. We thank God. Uh, thank God for your prayer. Continue to pray for us. Brother Ross, while he was driving back, he had an accident. But he's safe. All are, he's back here. Amen. And also we wanted to pray for our brother Muleya's child. He is admitted in the hospital. Yesterday we asked the Lord to touch the child and heal. Let's close our eyes. Let's, these two specific needs. Let's pray. Father, this morning we pray for the healing upon Helen's family. And we know you are the only God who can heal when we are bereaved. So we pray that the healing to be upon Sister Helen's family. Thank you, Lord, for bringing them back safely. Lord, we pray for the precious son of Mule and the family as he's in the hospital. We pray right now we release the healing touch of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is sufficient to heal the, our child. Lord, the child is healed. We are going to have the great testimony. So we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's quickly turn to the bulletin page two. We have an upcoming event coming. Um, other rest of all, most of our activities we will resume in 2021. In the second coming of Jesus is delayed. The reason we don't want it to give a room for the enemy. So our Sunday school, the youth department, they also met. They also said they will be resuming next year. Next year, so all our departmental meetings, God willing, 
we will resume on 2021 this year rest of the three months we will separate set apart for praying and preparing for 2021 the lord who gave us the victory this year he will give us a greater level of victory 2021 so we have a seven days of prayer and fasting which is supposed to fall on the last month because of all these things we have pushed little it will be from 19 to 25 19 to 25 as of uh, that, that so prayer meeting we will have a the way things are seeing god willing we will have a seven days or evening meeting at the church in case if that we commit in the hand of god but prior to that please cover your pastor and family we will be beginning from tomorrow complete 21 days so finish it with uh, our church seven days of prayer and fasting we need your prayer support we need your covering and god will give us a victory the purpose of this 21 days along with the church seven days we as a family going on our knees is we want to see god is taking the house of prayer family to the another level spiritually relationally even materially career wise this year we want to make a difference Next three, these three months is a crucial month. This is the month God, months God has placed before us. We can have a breakthrough. And for us to have a breakthrough, we need to go before God. So the purpose of us, two of us are going completely before God for 21 days. We want to see the victory in your lives, in the church. So please stand with us. So mark it in your diary. Please, we are anointing the servants of God will be coming to minister first. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you God for what you have done this beautiful morning for us. Jesus, thank you, Father, for our elder Pat and our children. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We commit our wonderful children in your hands. Lord, we pray God's grace, God's favor is upon these children and our elder this year. In this difficult pandemic season, you preserved us. That itself is a great testimony. You are with us. So I pray as they celebrate their birthday this week, may the Lord open the floodgates of heaven and release a thousand fold return to the entire people, the children and the family of our elder. Lord, Return to the God, Father, our cry this morning. This year, they will see God's goodness. This year, O God. And many, many blessed years, O Jesus. They are a great blessing to us. So in the name of Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's appreciate to God. Let's put our hands together and appreciate them. Amen. We will have the Holy Communion first. Then we will take the offering. Then we go into the ministry of the word. Hallelujah. For those who have not been here during the time of uh, Corona, the, this is the first time you are attending a Holy Communion service. We have a different way because of government regulations. The Holy Communion will be served here. When after the prayer, first we encourage people from the back, from this side to come. Once I will give you, when you come, you can show your hand. I will give you the bread. Then you can pick a cup of juice. You can walk. When you reach, you can partake. Once this line is finished, we start from this line. They come, partake, go. From then, there were people on the upstairs. We can join. Amen. Just wanted to read a scripture from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. The worship team can take your position for the Holy Communion song. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 onward says, For I received from the Lord 
what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whenever eat the bread or drink of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before you eat of bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak or sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. Amen. The Holy Communion is a very serious business. This is the business. This is a covenant meal the Lord Jesus has prepared for his children. Children who are purchased by the precious blood of Jesus. The bread reminds the or symbolizes the body of Jesus Christ. And the juice symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ. So the word of God is very clear. It says, You must examine before we partake. And for the sake of those who are visiting, if you are born again and you have a confidence you are living a right life with God, you are welcome to partake the Holy Communion. And in your own church, you partake, you are again welcome this morning to partake the Holy Communion. Before we partake, let's close our eyes. Let's close our eyes. Church, this is not the house or prayer table. This is the Lord's table. And the Holy Communion reminds the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. Suffering, death. It also reminds His burial, His resurrection, His ascension. And also it reminds the second coming of Jesus is imminent. He is coming soon. He is coming soon. He is coming soon. We must be ready. We must be ready. Beloved, let our hearts and mind be filled with the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. As the Lord Jesus fill. Jesus fill. Jesus fill. With the suffering of our Lord Jesus from the garden of Gethsemane to the Golgotha, the pain my Lord went through to set us free from the bondage of sin and give us the privilege to partake his body and the blood. All his beloved disciples failed to stand with him at the last moment. He alone went and cried, Father, possible, take this cup. Not my will, but your will be done. And the word of God says, his sweatings were like a blood drops. That shows the heaviness of our sin. His own disciple whom he chose betrayed him by a kiss. The way the Roman soldiers treated him. Oh. He was flogged. Flesh from his body was shattered for our sin. They put a huge crown of thorn on his head and struck the huge, huge thorns, pierced his, his head for our sin. They spat on his face, they slapped him, made him half naked and hailed insult on him for our sin. He carried that heavy cross to Golgotha, falling many times for our sin. 
they gave him bitter vinegar to drink they pierced him the the blood and the water came out finally he said it is finished because of the perfect sacrifice this sunday morning we can partake the holy communion can we tell lord thank you for thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you lord thank you father thank you jesus thank you lord thank you lord lord we commit your people in your hand bless oh jesus bless the bread and bless the juice oh god sanctify it in jesus name amen amen all those who are going to partake the holy communion kindly stand on the night jesus was betrayed he took a bread when he had given thanks broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup say this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me <laughs> all those who are standing from the back please come please come Where I fell 
anyone at the balcony here who has not received the blood of juice blood of juice would you please raise your hand or come forward before we conclude father we thank you for today thank you lord the great privilege you given us to partake your blood and your body as the children of your of the new covenant we are humble before god thank you lord for the love thank you jesus as we have received and partake in your body and the blood our prayer give us a more grace to live a life that will be pleasing and acceptable and give us the grace to overcome every temptations and trials father and we will live a life that will bear fruit for your glory the bread and juice is remaining on this table it's a sign and indication lord you are bringing people from various nationalities and tribes and languages to house of prayer lord you will help us to receive the more jesus so that we will be able to partake your body and your blood bless so god in jesus mighty name we pray amen please take your seat please take it as ushers we will wait for the tithe and offering as the ushers wait for the tithe and offering i want to appreciate every single member of the house of prayer for your sacrificial giving in this tough season you have been very faithful giving to the lord May the Lord open the floodgates of heaven and return to you. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to give back to you. Here are your people whom you brought into this sanctuary house of prayer who are faithful, sacrificial, cheerful givers. Lord, our cry as they are giving, may the Lord show you a grace upon them let them not lack oh god lord if anyone among us has nothing to give today is the last day let there be an overflow and every single coin will be used for the expansion of your kingdom in jesus name amen and amen as the worship team come please the worship team has gone I wanted a song to just to worship as that shares If you are able to stand you are able to stand ushers please wait for the tithe and offering once if god has given you a tithe and offering and just drop it then close your eyes tune to the presence of god we are just going to 5 minutes to just to worship hallelujah thank you jesus if you are able you are able to free to stand it is not about your gesture it is not about your posture it is about how you are tuned your heart to the lord amen
Thank you, Lord. Father, as we sit at your feet to listen to your word, may you continue to minister to us. We are ready, O oh God. We are ready. Tune our hearts and our ears. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Please take your seat. Please take your seat. Let's not miss the presence of Jesus. The Lord is with us. He's here. When you leave this place, I want you to leave as a totally different person. The things you carried must be melted, removed. As a pastor, release a new peace, new strength. And I pray you will receive a new voice from the throne of Jesus. Not a human voice, but God's voice. He will speak. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. To Sister Sophie who was seated there. Sister Sophie, this is what the Lord says to you. Yes, somebody, I want Sister Jennifer or Elder Mary Sambesi to go behind Sophie, Sister Sophie. 
past two, three days, you have been asking and battling certain things with Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. And today, you are not carrying that thing. The heaven has seen it. The heaven has seen it. Church, don't be a spectator. The Lord is doing amazing thing in the sanctuary. When the Lord touch somebody, don't look at that person, what that person is doing. It is your duty to close your eyes and pray, Lord, touch me. When you look at that person crying or screaming or enjoying the presence of God, you will watch and you go dry. Close your eyes and say, Lord, touch me today. And the Lord says, Sister Sophie, the things past three to four days you are battling the God, God has taken over it today. Oh, the month of October is a month of a new beginning in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is showing me there has been a spiritual chain that has been holding your leg, holding your hands that has not making you not to go beyond certain level. Today, the Lord has broken the chain. You are a victorious daughter of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Ruda Kabala Rakababa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I release that grace today. May this feet see the glory of Jesus. May this feet see the glory of Jesus. Today, the anointing of Jesus is going to overshadow your life. Oh, yes. Thank you. And the Lord says that people who have been taking granted. <laughs> that season is over in your life. That season is over in your life. The, you must know you are precious with a divine purpose in the hand of Jesus. May the Lord touch you. May the Lord release that grace upon you. Of 2020, God has a new assignment for you. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I release your thought. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My elder. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Kate. Thank you. Hallelujah. The Lord is again confirming. You have been crying, Lord. How do I find a solution? Can I finish it and take up another task? Or shall I just leave? The Lord says, My precious daughter, let's not hurry. I will say, the one, I am the one who brought you to Indola. I am the one who put you to that tough place. I am the one who stood with you till today. Even the toughest time I stood with you. The Lord says, I will speak to you. Beloved sister, woman of God, before the end of 2020, next to these three months, God is going to speak greater things to you. Hallelujah. And when he speaks the greater thing, hallelujah, make the decision what God says, not what Pastor Royanson say, not the prophet say, not anyone say, it is God is going to say to you. Hallelujah. God is going to say to you. Thank you. And once again, I want you, my daughter to know today, the devil is fighting severely because he doesn't want you to reach your destiny. He is using every strategy, but no, you are more than conqueror. 
The decision you have made before God. The covenant you have made before God. The sacrifices you have made before God. He has not forgotten. Hallelujah. Even God is going to perform some visible supernatural sign in your family back in Lusaka. Before the end of this year. Some things which they thought it is impossible. That impossibility is moving before the end of this year. And you will receive it. You will testify in the name of Jai. As the servants of God. We declare it. Along with Elder Mary Sambesi. Along with Elder Mom Janet Mukumba. With Elder Bridget. And the congregation. Uh, we agree what God has spoken to the daughter of Jesus. Kaito will accomplish in the name of Jesus. Ruda kabala gada ruda dira rajala gas. Rakabara rajala gada raka dira jala. Oh, we worship. Holy Spirit, we worship. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for ministering to your people. Hallelujah. Thank you. Right now, the healing grace of Jesus is very strong in this sanctuary. The Lord is touching him. Some of you are, you came with pain on your body. Hallelujah. Thank you. Right now, the Lord is touching. There is a brother and a sister who had a severe pain on your knees. Hallelujah. Even you are not able to sit and stand. Even you take a painkiller even this morning before you come to church. Even actually you debated not to go to church. But today, the thing which brought you to church today is a healing power. Receive that healing upon your knees. That is the pain will never come in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's three people who left somebody at home, those who are not feeling well. Right now, we command in the name of Jesus. Lord, distance is not a limitation for my Jesus. You are stretching out your healing hand. There is a visitation at the home. It is coming in the name of Jesus. I pray that you're healing upon the home. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is somebody here. You are a sister. Past one week, from nowhere, you have been experiencing a kind of depression in your life. Going suddenly to a gloomy. Even, even you made an excuse. Two days even you didn't go to work. You don't know what is happening, what is happening, but you are wondering what. But today, that spiritual attack today from this altar under the grace, under the anointing which the Lord has released today in this sanctuary on the 4th of October, I remove that spirit of depression and gloominess. May you testify in the name of Jesus. May you testify. May the spirit refresh you, revive you right now wherever you are. May the joy of God, may the happiness of Jesus, the rejoicing of Jesus, the shalom, the peace of God overshadow your life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen and amen and amen. Very quickly we will pick it up for later for next two, not now, one next time. This morning, turn to your book Genesis chapter 12 very familiar scripture Genesis chapter 12 Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 4 then we look at chapter 13 a few verses if the time permits Genesis Chapter 12 says, The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. 
I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. This morning, next 25 minutes, I just wanted to encourage you a message which we will continue next time. No, I will not be able to finish it today. This message is titled, I am on a divine mission. I am on a divine mission. Look at your neighbor and say, my neighbor, I am glad to see you this morning. In case if you don't know me, just wanted to let you know I am on a divine mission. Hallelujah. You are on a divine mission. Let me repeat that statement always I make here in the church. Every child of God on this earth is on a divine mission. Since every child of God on this earth is on a divine mission, I must not look that person down. It's because I see someone, the status, social, spiritual, economical status, on the basis of that, I am not supposed to look anyone down. As a pastor, I want to let you know, we as a family, we don't do. We look all of you as a person who is purchased by the blood of Jesus. For me, when I look past Peter, the same, of course, I respect him as a pastor. Peter, the same way I should look at Masali. The same way I should look at Sister Jennifer. Uh, the same way I must look at Elder Mary, of course, she's, I have to give her another respect as an elder. But the, everyone, so it is important this morning as you are seated at the church, sanctuary, just want to know, sometimes when people don't recognize you, they look you down. One of the things is we get disappointed. You as a child of God, you should never get disappointed. Hallelujah. We are the only group, a breed, a peculiar, that's why Apostle Peter said peculiar people. We are the only breed who exist on earth. You cannot be disappointed by any earthly things. The reason why you are not on this earth on an earthly mission, you are on this earth on a divine mission. That's why, now coming back to the scripture. The scripture which we read, the Genesis chapter 12, which is very well known to all of us from the Sunday school. Everyone know, even if you, any child you ask, you know, what is the great Genesis chapter 12, which tells you it is talking about the call of Abraham, how God called Abraham. So we know, and the promises God promised to Abraham, Abraham, that time Abraham, we know, but this morning, the, you as you are seated here, let me encourage you you beloved child of God the one reason including the corona had hit the world hard this pandemic has taken many people around and even including our country the reason why you and I are still alive here it is not we are taken of course we have taken precaution it is not because of our precautions it is not because where we live it is your mission has not accomplished your mission has not accomplished. My mission has not accomplished. Beloved, how so, how so prayer mission for this season has not accomplished? You, God brought you to this church. There are better churches in Indola. Why God allowed you to be here? God has a divine mission for you. Mission for Kanini. Mission for this territory. So that has not finished. Now chapter 12. Verse 1 says, the Lord had said to Abraham, 
go from your country. Now we know, if you connect that scripture, just to getting an introduction, chapter 11, last part, we, could, we know the Abraham, Abraham's father, Terah, has passed away. That's what if you read verse chapter 11 verse 32. Terah lived 205 years and he died in Haran. Then the chapter 12 starts. The Lord had said to Abraham. That means before we were there, the Lord had spoken to Abraham. Abraham about the mission. That is why if you connect that scripture to Acts of the Apostle chapter 7 we, when the Stephen was giving a speech when they were with confidence chapter 7 Acts of the Apostle chapter 7 verse 2 to 3 he is connecting his revelation back to the call of Abraham, he is saying, chapter Acts of the Apostle, chapter 7, verse 2 to 3 says, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. Leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land I will show you. Here, when we hear, chapter 12, uh, Genesis chapter. Chapter 12 begins with uh, uh, Abraham with his family in Haran. But in the New Testament, Acts of the Apostle, Stephen is taking the, us back to the place where God spoke to him first. This is where I want before we even we come to the point. It is if you are a child of God, it is very important it is even an imperative you should not forget what God speaks to you hallelujah it is very sad after 45 years you will not forget you can't forget what your girlfriend or boyfriend told even the different woman or man you married you won't forget Ah, that girlfriend when I was in the university, she told me that now you are a grandfather, a grandmother, still you don't forget. You still remember. But what God told you last month, to forgot. Ask your neighbor, do you remember what your girlfriend told 10 years before? If you are sitting with a husband or wife, don't ask. I don't want uh, uh, continuing the ministry at home. Hallelujah. Here all those who are married with the spouse, tell you they never had a boyfriend or girlfriend. That God just brought the spouse. And they married. Uh, look at, uh, let me use, look at Reverend Chileshe. <laughs> and our mom. Look at our dad and mom answer. God, it is imperative. You should never forget what God immediately, if he can't write it in diary, engrave in your heart. Engrave in your heart. So coming back to the scripture, when you are on a divine mission, because of the time, we will go more detail into the introduction next time. When you are on a divine mission, few things you and I must understand. One thing, you are about to have a shift from being a follower to a leader. I want you to understand, when you have a divine mission, your Christian life Always be ready to have a shift from a follower to a leader. We'll come back to chapter 12. He says, the Lord had said to Abraham, go from your country. Now, the father died. He was, he had a revelation. God spoke to him in the land of Mesopotamia. And he was still with the family. And God is still moving. And when he is moving, time came in Haran. The Lord said, again God is 
is reminding. This is why it is another imperative and important for every child of God to remember to put in practice. If you are a child of God, a woman of God, and man of God, when God says something, wait to hear from the Lord properly. Don't hurry. God is not a God of microwave. Microwave gives you quick. If you are using a charcoal to make a cup of tea, how many minutes will it take? And now have you seen, if you are making a tea or coffee in a charcoal, you want a dress in a, like, you, I can go with this dress and make a coffee in my microwave. But if I put a charcoal with this dress, when I finish the coffee is ready, you will find some air conditioned windows here and there. My smell will be different. I will smell smoke. I will smell smoke. I remember one of my teachers when he was teaching me in a Bible college, he said he was a senior pastor in a church in a remote village when he went to visit the house. When he saw, when he immediately, he, the mother of the house saw, that is the time I'm talking about how many years. I'm talking about, he told me in 1994, that time some of you are not even born, including Pastor Peter was not born that time. So I'm telling all the girls his age. Uh, so then he was, that time there was no microwave, no electric cook, no gas stove was common. Everybody was using firewood. Hallelujah. Firewood. So in the moment the soap, the man of God is coming, the mother of the house, and it is a rainy season. You know, it's a monsoon season, heavy rain. The mother went outside and ran and got some dry Firewood sticks which are already wet in the water and when they rush to the house, put it in the place where she, and it because she's also speaking to the man of God. Her little man of God is sitting there, she's speaking from the kitchen and put the stick, put some pepper, put the matches and light and she is fanning. <laughs> Funding and after 15 minutes of talking, the tea was boiled. Because of the talking and the making tea, rather more than the fire, it was smoke. When the pastor, the man of God, was taking the tea, she asked, My dear daughter, while you were preparing the tea, I could see the Shekinah had entered the tea. Why? The tea was tasting smoke. Tea was. The reason is, that time there was no microwave. Today, Leonard can come to my home and he's a pastor, I'm going, I can make a coffee for him within one minute because tick, trrr, tick, tick, coffee is ready. Coffee, microwave. But God, when God speaks to you, God never does things in hurry. He expects people to wait for his time. How so pray? That's what I was. God is a God of time. Now, when God called Abraham in Mesopotamia, now here in Haran, he is telling, aha, uh -huh, what is he saying? Uh, go from your country, your people, and uh, your father's household to learn. I will show you. When when God has given you a divine mission, the first thing he will do is he will give you a shift from a follower to a leader. How do we know that shift happened? That's why you know, any of you a simple Bible, Bible student, every believer we know in Genesis chapter 12 verses 1, 2 and 3 gives a, a sevenfold blessings which God has given. But I'm not going to do that sevenfold blessing. But I'm going to make you to little bit understand when God does a shift from a follower to a leader, what are the empowerment God does in your life? First thing, what does he do? He does, he may give you a purpose. Now, let's read chapter 12, verse 1. 2. I will make you into a great nation. A follower, purpose of a follower and the purpose of a leader is different. A follower is followed by the purpose of a leader. 
and many followers they don't know the purpose of even the leader you, that's why crowd when you follow crowd you don't know why that's why wherever jesus went even the bertimoi the blind man who was healed there were plenty of crowd wherever jesus went there were crowd but most of the crowd don't have any purpose beloved child of god you a god has called you to uh, this season in house of prayer the reason he called is not just to come and sit and worship and go god has a divine mission and the divine mission is not the sunday attend attend the service and when you die you must finish three or four chair to break ask your neighbor how many chairs you have broken in the church that's the only anointing you have breaking the church you sit and pray but god has a mission what is the mission as he here says i will make you into a great nation when god appoint you his mission is not a natural mission and this just i want you to understand i will make you into a not just a nation great nation house of this is let me tell every parents here let me encourage you when you see your child when you see every day your children your grandchildren speak the abrahamic prophecies upon your children they may be dull in study they may not be very active they may be naughty but look at that boy look at that girl and say you are a child whom god sent into my family with a divine mission and because of that mission is god you are going to be a man and woman with a purpose so i see what is the purpose you become a great nation that means your territory is beyond what people can understand Let me prophetically declare upon house of prayer congregation beloved child of god my mom my dad my brother my sister my young people who are seated here you are not just a simple person you may be working in that office doing that small business that is the beginning like in abraham there is a prophecy what he has done you have a mission your mission is with a divine purpose and the divine purpose is a great nation I encourage I prophetically expand your territory in the name of Jesus not only to a purpose then he says I will make you into a great nation I will bless you when you are shifted from a follower to a leader not only he give you a purpose he give you a contract in the bible contract is called covenant in the secular world it's no covenant when but it is a contract but in the bible it is a covenant that's why i, I will bless you when god shift you from a follower because he was following his father his entire household now here god say you have followed enough you have heard my voice you have followed enough now the time has come there is an another step today i again prophetically declare to some of us who are seated here you have been following you have been doing certain things but today the time has come step out of that cocoon and make a decision according to what god has spoken to you God has spoken it may be looking foolish it may look oh no, not uh, it may look abnormal people may think you are crazy people may think you are mad let them think only you and your god knows what is spoken hallelujah hallelujah yes there is a covenant what uh, covenant is an agreement there is no one give you a prom- uh, no one make you a leader without an agreement agreement today god has made you a covenant with you. what is the covenant i will bless it what is that one it is not just when i say uh, i will take my wallet and get a 50 coach and bless pastor peter i am blessing you this is not what the bible talk to abraham what abraham, god say my son when i say i will bless you who i am what i am what he seen me i am imparting to you imparting to you hallelujah then abraham god is saying that is a covenant means abraham to till last maybe few days before you are you were the son of torah 
Yes, biologically, Torah is your father. But today, beyond the blood relationship, I am making you a covenant. What is that covenant? I am coming into your life. Today, from today, your entire life history is changing. Today, from today, your entire genealogy is changed. Physically, of course, blood relatives, still the Bible in the New Testament says, Torah, the father of Abraham. But beyond that, there is a supernatural empowerment. Makes you say, I am the one who has created everything, has come and made an agreement with you. That is why Bible covenant called Caesarean covenant. The greater one comes and makes a covenant with the small one. Not we go and make, if I want to make a covenant with the superior to him, I have to bow down. I have to make. But when superior is coming, the creator has come to make a covenant with his creation. So he's saying, Abraham, my son, hallelujah, today I have spoken to you many times, many years before, but the time has come after I spoken to you, still you have been following. Now the time has come. I need you. You need to have a shift from now you must know the purpose. Since you know the purpose, I am having a covenant with you. I am entering into your life. I am entering into your marriage. I am entering into your relationship. I am entering into your career. I am entering into your business. So that I will bless you. That means where Abraham goes, God goes. That's why Jesus said, I will be with you till the end of the age. I, hallelujah. Even he said, me and I and the Father are one. The same way I am in you and you are in me. This is the mystery the Lord has been speaking. Today, let me release that revelation upon also pre congregation. You are, there is a shift from a follower to a leader. That means in your family, in your spiritual life, in your university, in your marriage, in your business, you have been following, doing things ABCD. Now others should follow you. Now, why others should follow you? It is not you doing the business. It is our God doing the business. It is not you are in the marriage trying to come. No. It is the Christ in your marriage. It is not you are struggling to get admission in the university. It is not you going. It is Christ going. Hallelujah. That is why he again confirmed in the book of Joshua chapter 1 he said wherever you place your feet. I will give you. It has nothing to do with Joshua's feet. It is coming. It has to do with the covenant. Hallelujah. It has to do with agreement. It is making difference. Who is with you? Who is with you? Are you with your friend or are you with the one who made a covenant? Look, look at your neighbor and say, my neighbor, I am with my Christ. I am with my Christ. When the Christ is with you, what happened? There is a covenant. Second is the covenant. Third, what is the third? If you read, I will make your name great. After give a leader gets a, has a purpose, has a covenant or contract, then a leader is given a title according to the assignment he has given. A title. Here, Bible says, I will make your name great, a new name. I am not telling tomorrow you go and change your name. That is not what I am saying. What I am saying is, today, in, in 2020, my prayer, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, my prayer is just simple for house of prayer congregation is, the mission the Lord has given to you, because of that mission, the purpose and the covenant he made with you, the manifestation of that purpose and covenant must begin to see today in the name of Jesus. That's what he said. Well, you, I will make your name great. You know that word when God's why now we'll connect to the scripture what we were discussing. When covenant he made Abraham, today you are not alone. I am with you. Now, when God makes his name, if my God makes whom shall when God makes Nandu's name great, it is not actually Nandu's name is great, it is his name. 
Because why? Gantu is not alone. Gantu is in Christ. Christ is in Gantu. Beloved house of prayer family. There is a benefit to being in Christ. Hallelujah. That is a, in the world. People use shortcuts. But in God, there is no shortcut. There is a perfect way. If that, that is why I wanted, that's why uh, if you read that scripture, uh, let me read it, that scripture. Psalm 37 verse 23. All of us know that verse. Psalm chapter 37 verse 23 says, if the, Lord's deli if the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. Though he stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord uphold him with his hand. Then the last second word says, I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or the children breaking bread. That is the David is saying. He is telling was young, now I am old. That means when David is writing Psalm 37 verse 23, he was an old man. So he is telling, I have not to sin. Why a righteous forsaken or the children begging bread? Why? It is not the man, it is the covenant blessing. It is the covenant blessing. It means when the Lord entered into the life of Godfrey Shindano, it is not Godfrey Shindano working. It is not Godfrey Shindano providing for the children. It is the one who has entered into his life, who has taken his leadership, who has given him an assignment, who has given made a covenant, who has given a new name, a name of great. And when you give a name of great, he cannot make you a beggar. Today, I declare it in the name of Jesus. You are a businessman. You are working. You are a student. You are employed. You are running institution. There are forces trying to finish you. The forces trying to intimidate you. The forces trying to scatter you. I want you to know, go today from the sanctuary knowing I am not alone. Hallelujah. I am running my business with Jesus. I am, my family is with Jesus. My children is with Jesus. My health is with Jesus. I have a covenant and the covenant is not an ordinary covenant. It's a covenant with the blood. Not the blood of the witchcraft, not the blood of the human sacrifice, is the ultimate blood. That is the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of the Lamb of God. The perfect and the eternal blood of Jesus. Who can fight against you? Who can fight against you? If the Lord, the Lord has delighted in you, may the Lord's delight be upon house of prayer congregation. Two more things, I'm done. Hallelujah. Yes, name that God has given you a new status, uh, as a title. No designation. Then verse 4, the fourth thing, he says, not only I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Or, in another word, when... Uh, when you become a leader, God shifts you from a follower to leader. Given, received the purpose, received, entered a covenant, given a new, received a new title. Then now what? He put you as a vessel of transformation. You become a vessel of transformation. This is where I want you to understand. God has placed you in a company. You are going through a tough time. Don't give up. Reason why? You are a vessel of transformation to that place. You are, God has put you in that marriage. Don't think of anything. Negative, only love the person. The reason God has a plan for you as a family to transform. God has given you a territory. You are staying in a certain places. And you may be wondering and your neighbors are fighting against you. Let them fight. The reason why let them fight. They are fighting not because you have stolen. Not because you are abusive. Not because you are drunk. They are fighting because they can't handle the one you are carrying. 
they can't handle the one you are carrying they, the power they possess they cannot understand even your business maybe you are going through thick and thin the reason is enemies trying to frustrate you let them frustrate you there is a limit anyone can frustrate the what happened is the more if i let me use whom let me use whose name let me use morgan the more i frustrate him the more the his stress is going my stress also going and the good thing is that when if you are morgan is a child of god and i try to frustrate morgan what does god does the more i frustrate he release the more grace hallelujah i put him i put a weight on 10 kg god release a 15 kg grace hallelujah my 10 kg frustration floats when i see morgan is smiling i add 10 more then it is 20 kg weight frustration then what does god does he release a 35 kg grace my 20 kg weight floats hallelujah then i see now what happening is i am putting 30 there is no grace in me my heart is having a 30 kg frustration now why last step what i do i put a 50 kg weight on him what does god does he is a god of 100 folds he release a 100 fold grace on him my 50 kg weight floats that is the time what happened roynson get a heart attack roynson get a heart attack why why to get a heart attack may the enemy frustrate you there is a more grace receive the grace house of prayer congregation receive the grace i pray in the name of jesus in your family and in your workplace in your business in your education in your career in your future tell the devil you can frustrate i am on a divine mission hallelujah rakabarakas yes you become a vessel of transformation fifth there's a two for spiritual empowerment verse 3 i will bless you those who bless you i will curse you after because you become a vessel of transformation god make a two fold release a two fold empowerment one what is empowerment one empowerment is i will bless you those who bless you that is why we are connecting the reason why when i step into the uh, when i meet lenard i am going with jesus who is blessing i am shaking the hand it is jesus is shaking hand that's why apostle paul in the book of galatian he say you are the living epistle of jesus christ you are living epistle that is why beloved child of god when you are outside hallelujah you must be very careful people may not know who you are but there are people who knows the way i talk the way i walk the way i look hallelujah maybe pastor tani has changed the hairstyle put a mask and i found the pastor tani in the shop right i didn't know it was pastor tani i'm looking pastor tani by knowing ba wow, pastor roins and he didn't even she didn't smile at me she must have fully that's why hallelujah it is very important that's why book of job job said i made a covenant with my eyes i will not sin i may come it is why it is why very important as a child of god wherever you are wherever you are you must be very careful because you are carrying a empowerment it is not a earthly authority has given you it is a divine empowerment what is that when they receive you bless that's why this is why by new testament and old testament is connected that's why jesus when they sent two by two they say when you enter into a house says shalom if they accept you the peace of god will remain there if they throw you out trust the dust the curse that's why god said to abraham those who bless you i will bless you those who curse you i will bless you that's why in the new testament again those who carry the feet of the good news are blessed you are blessed will our child of god may the people talk anything about you you if you are a house of pre congregation member let me stand here and you are blessed in the name of jesus two fold empowerment the one more thing then for you to finish the leadership assignment the last two one a supernatural a in, uh, put 
getting a supernatural capacity. That's why, oh, I will bless you, those who bless you. Whoever curse you will curse you. And all the people on the earth will be blessed through you as increasing a super, uh, sorry, depositing a supernatural strength increase your capacity to be an effective leader in your place because you are on a mission on this earth. Depositing a supernatural strength to increase your capacity to accomplish the mission. Shall we all stand? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are on a mission on this earth. You are on a mission on this earth. Beloved child of God. Hallelujah. I don't know you remember or you understand your mission. But I want to let you know you are on a mission. Your mission is not to finish on this earth. No. Your mission is not to just make money. Your mission is not bring forth the generation. Your mission is to build the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That's why God called Abraham. So that he can separate a generation to bring forth the Messiah into this world. And the Messiah will die on a point in time as a perfect eternal sacrifice to redeem the entire world for him. To destroy the kingdom of darkness and populate and build the kingdom of God. You are chosen vessel into that mission. In spite of your age, in spite of your education qualification, in spite of your social status, you are called. When God called Abraham, that's why being a follower to a leader. There's a shift. When we were once under darkness, that's what Apostle Paul clearly says in the book of Ephesians. Once we were without God, we were indulging in sin, had no relationship with the people of Israel, people of promise, but through Jesus, he purchased us. Today, you are a child of God in this sanctuary. You are worshipping Lord. You give tithe and offering. You speak in tongues. My beloved brother, sister, do you know your real mission? Oh, you are no more a follower. You are a leader for Jesus. So that you can lead people into the kingdom of God. But, um, Pull them from the kingdom of darkness. I pray that will be a portion in the name of Jesus. As you are doing that leaders, uh, leading uh, work, may the devil may frustrate you, the devil may torture you, but there is a grace. Lord increase. Today I am releasing your congregation of Jesus from the sanctuary with the grace that he can float any form of stress, any form of confusion, any form of attack, that one will float like a canoe in an ocean. And but your people will be sucked in the grace of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, may the people of God leave this place with that confidence. I cancel accidents. I cancel sicknesses. I cancel incurable diseases. Any affliction, calamity, sorrow, anything premature death, the devil want, even COVID-19 infection. I cancel it from the house of prayer territory, oh God. Bless oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Please take a seat to one minute. We have done. Look, as you are sitting, tell your neighbor, you are on a mission. Hallelujah. At this moment, we will take an offering for the construction. Uh, for those who are visiting, we take a two offering. We don't look at anybody. We don't force. If the offering bag goes, God has given you something, you are free to drop. This offering purely goes towards the construction of the sanctuary. Our new toilets will be ready 
within shortly it's everything is done just we are waiting for the technicians to come and fix it may the lord bless you thank you church for your sacrificial giving may the lord bless you may the lord bless you amen amen let's close our eyes please once again sorry to bother you stand please we have done we have done he as the offering bags pass god has given you something just to drop close your eyes hallelujah tell you lord release a more grace upon me tell the lord release a grace more grace more grace thank you jesus let it be a song today more grace lord hallelujah enemy is stressing me enemy is pressurizing me the devil wanted to see me break down but today the grace is floating over me the pressure the stress the pain is floating like a ocean all over the ocean but you are rejoicing in the grace of jesus hallelujah o rakabala gada rakabara jalagasya alkara rabala ruda dhira rajala gada shakamana gasya adura rabala gada rakare jagale raude rabala gasya father i thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you lord hallelujah thank you jesus mary my elder mary sambesi my elder please stand next to sister jennifer i the god is telling me to release that word grace hallelujah sister there is a grace that's what god says 2020 before the end of this year you are going to have a experience of over grace grace that is what the lord says grace grace i don't know why grace hallelujah receive that grace receive that grace hallelujah thank you jesus i think you have been i don't know the lord is showing me right now you are trying to battle certain things to put to things and finish but it is a real battle for some time but today the lord says grace grace he says the answer is grace tell i am hearing the voice now the lord says tell my daughter my grace is sufficient my grace is sufficient and the grace is going to manifest to soon oh hallelujah in the name of jesus we release that grace upon your daughter father we thank you thank you father for your people as we go thank you father for the sacrificial giving of your people towards the construction of the sanctuary bless the most jesus let no one lack anything oh lord we pray for the rest of the week ahead of us we will you will give us a powerful testimony thank you lord if it is your will on wednesday 18 hours we will come here for the miracle night service thank you lord now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forever amen and amen may the lord bless you have a blessed and wonderful week we have a miracle night service wednesday 1815 looking forward to see you
working power everything you breathe on coming back to life at the mention at the mention of your name